Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and this is Into the Warren. This channel is specifically dedicated to the wonderful world of crocheting and it's a fairly new channel. I've just started, this is my third video. I just wanted to say before we get going that I am so blown away about how much support I have already gotten and how many subscribers I have in just a matter of a few days. I've watched some videos of other people other channels who have mentioned my channel who have mentioned me and the work that I've created and I'm just like wow I mean you you don't even know me but you already are showing this love and support that I didn't know was really out there so thank you so much I have spent a lot of time trying to answer all the comments and say thank you uh, so please be sure to leave me comments if you have any questions or anything like that I'd be happy to answer them I also have a Facebook page where I do share some of my work right now I'm doing the hundred day project if you're not sure what that is my last video is focused on the hundred day project for every day I'm posting updates of my work so if you would like to follow that I have both a Facebook page into the Warren and an Instagram page Called into the Warren as well and I'll link those below if you'd like to follow so I mentioned in my first video that I'm pretty new to crochet I just started in January and we're now in April and I was contemplating and reflecting on my experiences as a new crocheter and the very first day I decided I wanted to crochet and maybe you know just thinking about the challenges and the things that I didn't know and wasn't sure of when I tried to start crocheting and I wanted to share with people who might be interested in becoming crocheters as well maybe some some tips or some first steps that might help you on your journey to crocheting so the first tip I wanted to share was and this is gonna sound silly to even have to say this but it isn't to everyone so I just want to clarify that crocheting and knitting are not the same they're from the same family they're both needle craft but the techniques the tools the stitches and the patterns are completely different I know how to crochet now I have no idea how to knit one day I will because I love knitted stuff I think it's so beautiful but I'm trying to conquer one thing at a time and I'm sure you all can um, those who crochet can understand or knit can understand just because you know one doesn't mean you know both that's one really important thing to remember that if and when you do buy a pattern that you would like to make uh, a project you'd like to make make sure that it actually is for crocheting and not knitting because they are not interchangeable and I've seen that mistake before that's one thing also you're gonna have relatives and friends maybe call you a knitter and you're a crocheter you can decide whether you want to correct them or not you might just want to go with the flow but that's a very um, common thing that I've I've seen that crocheting and knitting people kind of put in one bucket the other thing about knitting and crocheting obviously knitting you're gonna use two knitting needles whereas in crochet you're just gonna use a single hook the second thing that I want to talk about and I can can see it now in my mind so the day I decided I wanted to crochet I went into Joanne fabrics which is right down the street and I thought to myself okay I kind of understand what crochet is I'm gonna walk into Joanne's I'm just gonna buy a crochet hook and I'm gonna buy one skein of yarn. Actually, I didn't even know the word skein. I was just like, I'm just gonna buy a ball of yarn, right? So I go into Joann's and I get to the yarn section and I'm blown away. There's so much yarn from the floor to the ceiling of all different kinds, colors, textures. And I go, okay, well, which one do I pick? Like which ball of yarn should I buy to start my crochet practice like which one is the best choice for me and it's really overwhelming so what I did is I picked whatever yarn I thought was pretty and it was a bulky um, like a golden mustardy colored ball of yarn I just picked that because I liked it and there was no other real rhyme or reason to it but if I were to go back and knowing what I know now and what I would recommend to people who are starting their practice with crocheting is that it's really good to know that yarn has different weights there are, there's weight one yarn there's weight five yarn seven and the higher the weight number the thicker the yarn will be and each weight is used for different purposes so what I would say to someone who is walking into a craft store to buy some yarn to begin practicing crochet my suggestion would be is to look for yarn that is medium weight 
Medium weight is the most commonly used yarn and it's also called worsted yarn. And I wanted to show you how you would know what weight is what. So if you go to the store and you see some yarn on the back, usually, there will be some icons. And if you notice right here, you see this little ball of yarn icon and it says the number four, okay? And it also says medium. So this is worsted weight, medium weight yarn. Four equals medium weight. This yarn is kind of like your default yarn into making scarves, blankets, hats. You know, there's a many different types of items that you can make with medium weight yarn. It's more versatile and it's a good size to practice. It's not too thin, it's not too thick, it's just right. Okay, so that's what I would suggest is to pick a medium weight yarn. Once you get more experienced and you start buying patterns or making your own things, the patterns will tell you what weight of yarn would be the best for the project. It's also very important to pick the right weight of yarn if you're gonna do any kind of garments because you want it to be the correct size. So if you pick something that's maybe thinner or lighter, it may be smaller when you make it as opposed to if you bought some jumbo or chunky yarn, you know, it would be bigger. So that's what I would suggest. If you go in, most of the, I think the majority of yarn that you'll find at craft stores, the, the most that they have are medium weight because it's most commonly used. Some examples are Red Heart Super Saver. That's inexpensive and it's a good way to practice without spending a lot of money. And this is Vanna's Choice. This is this is Lion brand yarn, but this the line is called Vanna's Choice. As you can see, there's Vanna White. And this is a great yarn and relatively inexpensive to practice your stitches and your crochet work. Okay, well, now you've got a, a ball of yarn, right? You got a ball of yarn in your shopping cart, and now you need to buy a hook. When I got the ball of yarn, I put it in my cart, and I went to the crochet hook section. And guess what? There were a million crochet hooks of different sizes and I get, went to, I thought to myself, okay, now which hook should I get? I had no idea. The other great thing about the yarn bands is they also have both a knitting and a crochet icon here. And on it, you will see that they have a suggested size of hook that you can use for this particular yarn. So for this Vanna's Choice, it says that you can use a six millimeter hook, but it's also called a J10. A J10 and a six millimeter are the same thing. There's usually a millimeter size and a letter number name for this, for hooks, for all hooks. So that was, and I thought to look here, I just kind of looked at here hoping that something would say something and I did see the hook size. So I bought one crochet hook. This is just a recommendation. When you do get to a point where you're gonna make a pattern, they may ask for a hook size that is not the same as the one on the wrapper, and that's totally fine. I would suggest to use the hook that they suggest over the recommendation on here. So here I am in Joann's, I find my yarn, and I get just one hook, the hook that corresponds to the one ball of yarn that I purchased. And guess what? The next pattern I did used a different size hook, and I didn't have it. So my suggestion is if you really are in and you really wanna learn crochet, just go ahead and buy yourself like a short little set of a variety of size hooks. And that way you'll be prepared for the majority of projects that are out there. Don't get the most expensive ones, just go ahead and even just try the aluminum ones. I actually really like these, these Susan Bates. I don't have the clover ones that are very pricey, I just haven't had a need for them. Uh, if you do have joint pain or arthritis, you may wanna get more ergonomic hooks, but. These metal ones are great. When you do get to the point of practicing your stitches, you may feel a little overwhelmed because there are so many crochet stitches and so many ways to do patterns. But the truth is that most of the stitches you see out there, they consist of a certain sequence of the same basic stitches. Typically they're single crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, half double crochet, and treble crochet. So those are usually the, the, the main stitches that make up more of the fancier stitches. So those are the ones you'll wanna practice first. There are YouTube videos for both left-handed and right-handed people that you can watch to learn those stitches. So just practice those basic ones. Now, if you're in the UK, your stitches are the same, but they're called different things. Those of us in the United States, if you buy a pattern in UK terms, the stitch names are a little different. So what we call a single crochet in the United States 
the UK calls a double crochet. But then if you don't know that, you may do a double crochet in US terms, which is different. So it's a little m mixed up. It's like shifted a little bit. There's no single crochet in the UK. They call a single cro crochet a double crochet. I know it's very confusing, but there are conversion charts that you can get on Google that will help guide you. The next thing you need to know that's really important is counting your stitches. Counting your stitches is important because if you've ever tried crocheting before and the edges seem to be moving in or out or, or uneven, it typically either means that you have uneven tension as you're stitching or you're losing or adding stitches. So let's say the first row has 20 stitches. You want to make sure that the second row also has 20 stitches, not 21 and not 19, because as you do that, it starts to get wavy on the edges. So it's really important every row, especially in blankets and scarves and things that are very rectangular square, you want to make sure every, you know, when you get done with a row, just double check and count how many stitches across you have and make sure it's the same as the row below. That will make your life much easier if you know ahead of time. That's a very common issue. And as far as tension is concerned, you just want to make sure that you relax when you crochet. New crocheters tend to really get tense in their arms and they're trying to pull it tight, but the size of the crochet hook is a way to keep the tension correct and give enough spacing um, within the stitches. You don't need to pull tight. If you feel that your hook's not going through the holes of the stitches very easily, it's, it's hard to stick it through, you're, you're just being a little too tense. Just let it flow easily, keep your arms relaxed, keep your jaw relaxed, keep your whole body relaxed because that's when you start getting arm pain and wrist pain and hand pain from just being a little too tense with your crochet work. Trust me, it'll be totally fine. It'll look great. It won't look too loose just takes practice. So those are my tips today for those of you who would like to start crocheting the, the first step. So you walk into the store, grab yourself a ball of yarn, medium weight is my suggestion. Go ahead and grab yourself a little kit of hooks of a variety of sizes. A cheap one is fine, an inexpensive one is fine. And go home and start watching some YouTube videos, watch some demonstrations, or even take a class locally about crocheting that they might offer. Joanne Fabrics offers classes. I know my town has a get together once a week at the library where they teach knitting and crocheting to people who are new to the craft. So check it out, do some research and learn Take baby steps and relax while you're doing it and enjoy the journey and don't try to rush because it really is about the journey and not the destination when it comes to crafting. It's the experience. So that those are my um, tips for the day and I hope that helps those of you who are new. The only other thing I wanted to share today was some progress on what I've been working on the last couple days since our last video. I went to Michael's yesterday to get some more yarn for my elephant that I am working on because he's so big he's just eating up all that yarn. So I did grab some more of that and as you can see the elephant has an ear now. I need to work on the other ear. So that's one thing. And then of course Easter's coming in just a few weeks and it is a great opportunity to make some really cute fun spring stuff. They had some beautiful pastel impeccable yarn uh, at Michael's for just $2 and the skeins are really large. I got a pastel purple and a pastel green, like a mint green, and I found a free pattern and made these little babies. Aren't they so cute? I love them. And they're so fast and so easy and the pattern was free. You can't beat that. I will say... I swear I should just be a pattern tester like as my career. There is a mistake in the pattern. So I'm going to link the pattern below, but, rem but I'm going to tell you that there is one place you need to make a change. When you make the bunny, you go from the bottom to the top up to through one ear. Okay, that part's fine. When you add the second ear, uh, it's round four. Round four will say stitch across, just single crochet in every stitch. Okay, that's fine, but you need to do it two more times after that. So there should be three round fours because here there were three round fours. Um, and if you only do one, this year's gonna be shorter than the other. So just remember round four, do three times on the second ear, the left ear, and then it'll be fine. It'll be good. But these are super fast, super easy. I use safety eyes for the eyes and the nose. 
So you can stitch them on with embroidery or use safety eyes for them. And it's just, you create this front and back and then you single crochet all the way around. I like the crochet border on the front of them and make it non-bordered on the back. I think that looks better, but either way you want to do it, totally fine. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you like them, please subscribe. Please like my video. If you have any questions, comments, anything else, or maybe you have your own channel you'd like to share with me, I would love to see it. So please share below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Mwah.